it's possible for any human being to become more enlightened or awake or self-realized. And not only for every human being, specifically you can identify the true self and be able to discern the true self from the not true self. And this is very helpful. And we'll get deeper into that distinction, to that science, because that will really help you to get more clear, direct recognition of what you are and for it to really, really transform your consciousness, your sense of identity, to really free you from the limitations that you believe are real today. Is by going through the distinctions of what is the true self, what's not the true self. So you can clearly recognize that intangible, yet so vividly here, quality of that which is alive, which is not a form, which is not a body, which is not a mind, which is not a concept, which is not a, an object. It's not even a subject per se, although that's our entrance point, typically. It's the sense of us as the subject of our lives. But it goes beyond that. And again, people have called it God, people have called it the Buddha mind, Buddha nature, people have called it Christ consciousness, people have called it Brahman, people have called it Nirvana, people have called it heaven. The irony is, you're there now, looking at this conversation from heaven. And this dialogue is here solely for the purpose of helping you see that again. You have everything you could ever want for, and more than you can even imagine. This is not a false promise. It requires practice and recognition and commitment, because this universe is based on free will. Whatever you will, whatever you want, whatever you invest yourself into, you will get that realization or that outcome or that manifestation eventually in one shape, one way, shape, or form, in some way, shape, or form. Similarly with enlightenment, it is the result of your free will. If you don't want it, then you're going to kind of struggle with the concept of it. But if you want it, the more you want it, the more all the perceived obstacles are rendered irrelevant and empty. They're neutralized. The stronger your desire for knowing the truth of your own consciousness, which is not a form, it's not a particular experience, it's not this or that sensation or this thought or that thought. It's much deeper than being this or that. It's eternal. It, it shines through these clouds of experiences like, like the sun and the sky pervade the clouds. The self, the natural self, is like sky, like space, filled with self-luminous sunlight. I don't mean to sound too woo-woo, but it's, it's very much like that. And it's here, it's available, it's speaking to you, and you're listening from it. It's that which knows whatever you're thinking right now. Turn your attention back onto awareness itself, back onto the fact that you know that you exist. Become aware of the fact that you know that you are. And notice the experiential shift in attention and the result that that brings about already even doing it for a second or two. Can you imagine abiding in that, resting in that, making it brighter, making it so crystal clear, so self-confident? It will swallow up your delusions, your confusions. It will replace your fears, your confusions with this blazing light of bliss and freedom and clarity and skillfulness. It won't make you ungrounded per se. It won't make you unrelatable per se. No, you'll have a completely different experience of what you are than most people have of what they are. But it doesn't inhibit you, it doesn't stop you from relating to them, being with them, playing with them, engaging with them, dialoguing with them, being of service to them, interacting with them, learning from them, teaching them. That will all maintain itself, your ability to blend in as you currently already are doing anyway. It'll just become a conscious thing. 